7.58 a.m. We're going to yoga. One of us is going to yoga. Mm -hmm. One of us is going back to bed. Yeah. Hey, how'd you like yoga? It was good. It was probably younger than everybody by about 45 years. At least. At least. What was the average age? 75. <laughs> Did you get your hips all stretched out? Yep. Did you get down on the floor at all? Unfortunately, no. Everyone was in <laughs> chairs. It was Everyone. so fun though. And did you drink your water, young lady? No. <laughs> okay, that was so hilarious, but it was actually kind of cute too. It was, and it was kind of fun. It was yoga. At first it was, so we walk in, everybody is sitting on a chair. With gray hair. And, <laughs> with gray hair. <laughs> it was so funny. We're like, mm, okay. Actually, when we checked in at the desk, the guy did tell us that it was a silver sneakers yoga. So... My mother-in-law actually would love that, but it was darn cute. And so at first we were all like on the chair doing stuff, so it was pretty mellow. Once we stood up, it was a little more like regular yoga, but um, for like balancing poses and actually most of the poses you had one hand on the chair. <laughs> so that's good. We wouldn't want those little guys falling over. So the instructor came up to us after class and she said the average age in that class was 75. So I am proud of those guys. And it was absolutely hilarious. Every time she said, take a drink of water. She said, find your water. They would all drink in unison and then slam the caps down <laughs> and all the crinkling of the water bottles. <laughs> it was so funny. Anyway, I'm a little stretched out, but not much, but it was good for our mind and our body and our soul. Okay. We are headed to get our nails done. It's very, very cold. It was 40 degrees this morning and raining. Can you see how wet and rainy and cold? is still raining it's like raining cats and dogs i never see the rain so i'm just i'm amazed that it can be this rainy and that people live in this kind of weather <laughs> i'm like what do you guys do how do you deal with this anyway my lovely nails how beautiful is that i am on my way to see my other aunt and uncle we are actually, funny story, going to the same restaurant that I was at last night for the deep fried grilled cheese sandwich, which was amazing. So we're at the same restaurant and I'm meeting my other aunt and uncle on my dad's side. So I'm gonna have a quick little lunch. It's totally, totally soup and bread weather. That sounds awesome. Okay, that was so much fun because that is li literally my favorite uncle. He's so hilarious. That is my dad's brother and he's just so funny. So anyway, let's talk food for a minute. So yesterday I had like 70 something points. I had one meal. <laughs> the meal itself was not bad. The meal was 28 points. Uh, most of that, it, it was 20 points for that deep fried grilled cheese sandwich and that was worth every single bite. So what happened yesterday was all sangria. So um, yesterday was a high points day, but not a high food volume day, which to me makes somewhat of a difference. If I'm loading up on lots of food, then I feel feel really heavy, my weight instantly goes up. Um, it's completely different than if I'm over points because of beverages. So I don't know if you guys feel a difference, but I, I feel a huge difference. As far as my 
weight, um, like my weekly weight overall goes, um, I feel like I can stay pretty steady even if I'm over consuming beverage points. But if I'm over consuming food points and food volume, then my weight goes up. I feel really gross. I feel really heavy. So that's kind of where I sort of compromise with myself um, on points and going over my points. For those of you that watch my channel regularly, you know this. I go over on my points and usually it's um, beverage points. So yesterday was a high points day beverage wise. Um, today, I was thinking that soup sounded really good. Um, and then when I got in there, there it's also, I mean, it was 11-ish, so brunch sounded good. Um, so it's very cold outside and rainy and I had it narrowed down to soup and oatmeal because oatmeal sounded really good and warm and also I figured lower in points than a, a lot of other breakfast options that I could have. So I had it narrowed down to soup and the oatmeal. I actually chose the oatmeal because the soup would have been a cream based soup. Um, I think broccoli, ham and broccoli or something and it, it sounded good but not amazing and um, because it would have been cream based I think the the points would have been astronomical so I'm like okay let's go with the oatmeal let's go with the better choice it still sounds really good because I knew it would come with brown sugar and raisins and and toppings and I was going to use the toppings so um, unfortunately what also comes with the oatmeal is a cinnamon twist which they are delicious here this restaurant is known for their cinnamon twist so I have the cinnamon twist <laughs> Um, overall, I still feel um, like it was a, an okay option for, uh, okay, number one, I'm on vacation. Number two, this is a restaurant and food that I do not get at home at all. Um, so I feel like it was an okay choice. I was only able to eat like less than half of the oatmeal because it was really filling. I haven't had good solid oatmeal like that for a long time. So I had, here's what I tracked. A cup of oatmeal for five smart points. Um, I did not add the milk that came with it and I was very, very sparing with the brown sugar. So a cup of oatmeal for five, um, a teaspoon of brown sugar for one, one and a half tablespoons of raisins for two, and then one teaspoon of coconut, flaked coconut for, I think the coconut was one point as well. So the oatmeal ended up being nine smart points. So five, six, seven, yeah, nine smart points for the oatmeal. Not bad, right? Um, still higher than what I normally do, but overall not bad. Then the cinnamon twist. I really have no idea how to count that. I literally put in cinnamon twist in the tracker. Um, something popped up. There was a round table cinnamon twist that popped up. Um, Krispy Kreme cinnamon twist. It wasn't donut like. It was more bready, um, and it wasn't it wasn't like a cinnamon roll though either. It was a lot lighter. So something popped up called Bojangles cinnamon twist. Um, it was 11 smart points. I actually looked on the internet to see what it looked like. I just typed in Bojangles cinnamon twist, hit images, and I got a picture of it, and it looked fairly close. It actually looked heavier than the one that was here. Um, so mine may have been a little less than 11 points, but I just went ahead and counted that 11 smart points. So when you guys are eating out, a lot of times you really just have to guess. You have to pick the thing that is closest to what you had. If you don't know what's in the food, then try to do a general search on what you ordered, um, or you can break it down, you know, item by item. So I do a little bit of both. Um, with the oatmeal, I tracked item by item, and then with the cinnamon twist, I just chose something that sounded close and looked close. So that's the best you can do. And I still fully believe in tracking, even though you may not know exactly what you're eating or exactly what it is, or even exactly how much, I still believe it's a very good idea to at least get a general idea of where you're at as far as points. So I know now that I have had 20 points for the day. Um, and you know what, I'm really full. Number one, I never eat that early. <laughs> and number two, I don't think I usually eat that heavy that early. So I'm really full. I kind of regret, um, I wish I would have stopped at half of the cinnamon twist, but anyway, I'm really full. 
So I don't plan on having really any more food for the rest of the day until dinner. Um, we probably will have sangria again tonight, so I will um, have some high beverage points again. My daughter-in-law is making a Syrian food, and um, so basically it's some sort of ground beef rolled up in an egg roll wrapper and deep fried. So there's that. <laughs> And then there's salad, so I think we're having salad. So I think what I'm gonna do is kinda keep it light on the Assyrian food, like maybe just two of those, and I have no idea. I'll probably track that separately. I'm sure she just got regular ground beef, probably the 75%, so you know I'll track maybe four ounces of beef and then two egg roll wrappers. And then when you guys eat fried food, like how much do you account for for the oil? Like. Is it just one teaspoon that gets absorbed or does a whole tablespoon get absorbed or I'll probably count a tablespoon for both of the rolls so yeah something like that so I'm gonna be over on points um, for sure with food and beverage um, when I know I'm going to be over on beverage then I try to at least keep the food points to a minimum so if I can do 30 food points for today I, st I still think I'm gonna be over 30 food points so anyway I'm just thinking out loud trying to plan a little bit um, I I know I'm on vacation so I'm trying not to be too strict but I was also super super happy with myself yesterday when I realized that I had lost a little bit so I'd like to go back not necessarily with that loss but at least not with a huge gain so that's my deal anyway i'm gonna head back to my son's house and hang out with them for a little while we got some fun stuff coming up so we watched it last night which i have seen it before i don't think my daughter-in-law and my son had not seen it before total old school it it was scary it was still scary um today we're going to see the new It in the theater. So um, we watched that last night so we could kind of compare and see what the differences are. So I'm super excited to see the new one. And then we're gonna go play bingo. We started out with Silver Sneakers Yoga in the morning. Now we're gonna go play bingo <laughs> in the afternoon. So I'm doing the old folk thing today, I guess. But um, there is an Indian casino near where I live or where I am, where I grew up. Um, there's an Indian casino and we are going to play bingo at the casino. So cross your fingers that I win big. Um, and then I think we're just going to hang out at my son's house and I will hopefully get to see my grandson tonight. I will show you guys my grandson because he is spitting image of my son. Not this son. He is my other son's son. If that makes any sense. It doesn't. Families. Okay, so one more thing I wanted to mention was I am purposely trying to keep my beverage points low by making sangria so I could um, just have wine but I know that sangria is um, quite a bit lower in points so I am making sangria so that at least when I'm staying at my son's houses um, I can drink sangria instead of wine and cut the points down so I'm just I am enjoying my vacation very much um, I enjoy every vacation through food because I'm just a total foodie. It's how I was raised. We love our food. So I'm totally enjoying my vacation through food, but I'm also making a very conscious effort to reduce the points when I can and where I'm not gonna feel deprived. So those are just some of my strategies. And I also bought all those snacks last night at the grocery store. I haven't had any of them and I don't need any snacks today for sure. I'm super full. So anyway, just some tips, some tricks. This is what I'm doing while I'm on vacation to try and minimize. So, but I'm still having a blast. I may go and work out again tomorrow, tonight, not sure. What do you guys think of this lip color? Cause I don't think I like it. I bought literally three Ulta lip crayons, new colors, and I don't like any of them. The first one is a real dark black. Um, it's not black, but I wanted like a dark raisin. It's way too dark. The second one is a light champagne color. It's way too light. You can't tell it's on my lips. And then this one, I don't know. It's just a little too pink or something. I don't know. I just love 
the soiree color. So I think I'm literally going to take all three of them back, get one soiree to have an extra one on hand, and that's it. Also, I feel like it would be so easy to gain weight during the winter in a cold weather area because right now I have my jeans on. Um, so, I mean, I guess I'd want to still fit in my jeans, but I'm wearing huge sweatshirts and coats and I feel like it would be so easy to hide the weight and not even notice it that you would just keep eating. I would. I would just keep eating and especially eating comfort food, hot comfort foods like the soup I wanted today and letting my muffin top grow because I could hide it pretty easily. I think it would be way too easy to gain weight in this climate. So I'm glad, glad I'm not living here because I'm so tired of the rain too. So tired of it. <laughs> it's only been two days, two days of nonstop rain. Okay, one, two, three, run! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Hey everybody, we're back. I haven't had a chance to introduce to you officially my oldest son, Phoenix, here. Phoenix is 23? 23! Yep. I have a 23-year-old son. And this is Aubrey. <laughs> you guys haven't seen much of Aubrey. Say hi, Aubrey! Look, it's Mommy. Say hi, Mommy! Yeah, she's excited. <laughs> so last night we saw the old movie It, and today we all, minus the two girls, went to see the new movie It. And I wanted to see what Phoenix thought about it. We, we went to, we decided to compare and contrast. So that's why we watched the old one last night. Which one did you like better? Okay. Probably the new one, as most people would, probably would. You think most people will? Oh, uh, there's a lot uh, of diehards. Well, yeah. Um, but special effects really do a lot too. <laughs> was it just the special effects that you liked better, or...? No, the story was a little more detailed, too, although it was, like, completely off script um, of the first movie, I guess. It was, uh, like, almost totally different. I mean, pretty much a different movie. The very first part was the same, and there's a clown. Clown with the same name. Um, looks different, too, though. <laughs> and the rest, we're not going to tell you. Mm -hmm. But if you like the old movie, you should definitely go see the new movie, so you can compare and contrast, too. I actually like the new one better, too. It's worth seeing. Um, the old one's pretty good as well, though. Me? Yeah, it's like a classic. Mm -hmm. me? Well, what would you like to say? Talk to the camera. I can't. <laughs> I can't. She got camera shy. Okay. our prize onion right now. She is going to make an Assyrian dish called... What is it called? I don't have any idea what it's called. Burak? Burak. Lily, do you like Burak? Can I see? Can I see? I don't have it here. So she's cutting our gigantic onion. Julie, what's wrong? This giant onion. It's okay, don't be sad. <laughs> I'm just sad to see it go. And why do you have to chop it to death like that? Oh, that's really fine. Why? Tell me why. I don't know. It's an Assyrian thing. I'm almost done though, hopefully. It's an Assyrian thing and she doesn't know why they chop it so fine, but they chop all their food super fine. And it makes her really sad. <laughs> Okay, what are you doing? I'm mesmerized. Yes. I'm actually still crying from the onion. It's burning. Is that 75% lean ground beef? Um, either 75 or 80. And just some parsley and pepper and salt. Pretty basic so far. It is basic. Okay guys, next step on the burrug. Here we have our ground beef mixture with the onion and spices. I'm going to use these egg roll wrappers and wrap it right up to make them look like that. So here we go. How much of this filling am I putting in? Like mm, about two spoonfuls. And you do it diagonally. You know? mm -hmm. Towards the bottom a little bit more. So you want to kind of scoot up. Oh, that's the top. Oh, that's the <laughs> middle. 
More? No, that's a lot. <laughs> oh. Okay. So we want to use the water to... <laughs> Mine's going to look totally different from yours. Because all I know how to down. do is like a burrito. Mine's going to be like a little burrito. A little Barack burrito. Barack? Like Barack Obama? No. What's it called again? Barack. Oh, Barack. It's a Barack burrito. I'm putting lots of water. Julie says if you don't put enough water to seal it, then it's going to pop off and come apart. Look how cute. That's pretty good. And then more right here. And the oil is cooking. That's the oil. Ta-da! Okay, one more. So, this way, this way. Burrock burrito. I'm making Assyrian burrock burritos. Right? With a lot of meat. <laughs> With a lot of meat. Phoenix, do you like a lot of meat? See? A lot of, of meat. Of course it does. <clears throat> okay, so I go like this. Get it wet. <laughs> what? No, I'm using lots of water, aren't I, Phoenix? Yeah. Well, they're full. Oh, we like them full. Oh, so cute. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's all there is to it. Okay, guys, hot oil. In goes the little burrito. The Assyrian burrito. And it cooks so fast. Julie's just rolling out a little bit, right? Just kind of pressing it down so it gets to the top and the bottom. Yeah, that's it. That's and it, guys. Down. And that's what we look like. That's what we're going to eat. I'm so excited. Yum! Okay, here's the last part of our dinner. This is Julie's Iraqi salad. It is basically cucumber, bell pepper, and tomatoes, and lemon juice. That looks so delicious and so fresh. Okay, guys, it's like 11.30. I can't believe it, but the reason we are eating dinner so late is because of bingo. We were literally there for like four and a half hours, and I won, so yay me. But here is dinner. This is Julie's Assyrian dinner. We have the burrock, and I calculated these at five smart points each. Two smart points for the egg roll wrapper, two smart points for one ounce of 75% ground beef, and then there is um, some onion and spices. And I also counted one smart point for the oil that it was deep fried in. I counted one smart point only because it was a super fast fry. So five smart points each, that is 15 smart points. Here is the salad, which is the bell pepper, tomatoes, and cucumber, and lemon juice. So zero smart points there. I also have a glass of sangria, eight ounces for five smart points, and that is dinner tonight.